major changes are coming to the football calendar. They are on the horizon. The first one that's been spoken about that will happen, FA Cup third and fourth round replays, and the two-legged EFL Cup semi-finals are all expected to be scrapped as part of reforms to the English football calendar. Look, loads to discuss here. I want to go from uh, point by point. That one first, FA Cup third and fourth round replays. Again, look, it favours the big Premier League clubs who don't want the replays. But when I think of the FA Cup, I think of all the, you know, the people who sort of, you know, crowd around the TV mm. and you're a lower league team who's got into the third round and you get the game at Old Trafford and you want a replay because you get a replay, you make loads of money mm-hmm. and it almost saves some of those clubs. That's now been scrapped. And your fans get a day out at Old Trafford. Yes. A day out that they probably will never get in the league. Yeah. You know, we dream and whatever else as football fans, don't we? We dream about the impossible. Mm. But ultimately, if you support a team who are currently in the third tier, it's unlikely that you'll play Manchester United in a in a league clash. Yeah. So you're relying on the cup. You're relying on the opportunity. You're relying on the magic of the cup to give you that moment of giant killing that will live forever. Mm. And beca- and players have the opportunity to go down in history. You know, we all talk about the icons of of uh, days gone by, don't we? You talk about Thomas at Wrexham or um, Ronnie Radford scoring yeah, that goal. Yeah. You know, against Newcastle. You think these are these are special moments and these are special things and. And I think that it's just another example of us eroding the tradition and the sentimentality around football. It's hateful. But on the flip side to that, just to play devil's advocate, isn't it important to kind of keep, for the big teams anyway, the importance of the FA Cup and the League Cups? Because we've been speaking about how how some of the big clubs don't really care about those competitions until it gets to the latter stages. Mm. Isn't it important to make sure that those big clubs have a vested interest in it? Do you, do you know what, Eddie? I, I think that the big clubs... Because, look, they've, they've earned their position as being big clubs. Yeah. You know, the, the reason that so much money sw- like swishes about the Premier League, mm. swills around the Premier League, is because of the big clubs and the eyeballs and the money that the big clubs can generate. But any policy that's being made for the furtherance of the big clubs, I think, is a, is a bad idea. The big clubs benefit enough. There is enough money going Agreed. around for the big clubs. Agreed. I think that when we're making policy decisions it should be to benefit the smaller clubs yeah yeah we've seen a lot of smaller clubs go out and just <clears throat> that's the end of them bury yeah, for yeah, example. They, yeah like, they struggle just finish, they really yeah. struggle so i so, don't know i think this is i think this is bad bad news and also i don't think it does the competitions any favors like i don't think it does our domestic cup competitions any favors well, it, it doesn't do the domestic cup competitions favors but if you are one of those big clubs and i hate even talking about them like that but you don't want replays that's the last thing you want it's no. the last thing you want. No, but I don't necessarily think that's true. Who, who, doesn't, who doesn't want it? So, like... Managers. I no, mean, no, the, the managers, managers the managers, right? The managers probably don't. Of course the, they the, don't. The, the, players, the players certainly don't. The players probably don't. Yeah. Um, I think I think the, the boards, again, probably don't, but I think fans often do. Like, mm. I remember going to... Like, I remember Chelsea ended up playing two-legged affair in the, in the League Cup and we went over to Wickham. I loved it. When else am I going to get the opportunity of going to Wickham? Mm. I remember going to South End. As a Chelsea fan, when else am... It's all very well, you know, we, we were speaking moments ago, saying that... When else will you get down there? Yeah, when yeah. else am I going to get the opportunity to go to Roots Hall? Agreed. So, yeah. so you know, we, we say the big clubs don't want it. I think the fans of the big clubs certainly can find a, find a reason to enjoy it. I'd love Chelsea to be drawn in the third round uh, at home to Hartlepool. It ends up a draw and I get to go out there for a, for a game. All right, that's one of the changes. More changes, I've got more for you. Elsewhere, at least one Premier League match could be moved to Christmas Eve. Uh, we're scheduling discussions to be finalised on Friday, uh, this would be the first time, by the way, a day has been uh, sorry, a game has been played on Christmas Eve since 1995. The talks are Wolves versus Chelsea is the game that's been penciled in for Christmas Eve. Now this is a disgrace. That's a disgrace. This is it? this is Christmas Eve. And by the way, that's a Sunday. Ugh. So it's a Sunday. It's Christmas Eve. Wolves Chelsea. Do you, do you know what I think needs to happen here? I, I think that the the ownership of Chelsea are getting so much wrong. I think that the way that they are treating the club, they are trying to squeeze every penny out of the club and it's hateful, this new ownership. But do you know what I really think needs to happen? The current Chelsea CEO, Chris Urasek, he needs to publicly oppose this. He needs to come out and say that this is totally unacceptable. It's such a grim scenario. How, how on earth? Of course he's not going to do earth? that. One second. Well, he needs, do you, do he needs... you think he's going to do that? When they've got these fancy diamond seats at Chelsea that cost grands a year. Do you think he's going to be thinking about the fans? Addy, on a Sunday, on a Sunday, Christmas Eve, how on earth are Chelsea fans supposed to get home from Molyneux Christmas Eve? On a Sunday. On a Sunday. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, we know that the the train is going to be a skeleton service 
at best. Families obviously have social commitments, family commitments, and I think it would be a nightmare for away fans. And there seems to be this constant, constant desire to forget about match-going fans. There seems to be this constant, constant... Uh, process where match going fans are taken for granted oh they'll be alright they'll go anywhere and they will mm. that's the thing they yeah. will Chelsea will sell out that away day but it's a disgrace to put that on match going football fans and it's not about me being a Chelsea fan here no this is just fans in general, I remember no. I remember New Year's Day a couple of years a couple of years ago Manchester City played away New Year's Day at Arsenal and a 12-30 game Rodri scored a last minute winner mm. Rodri but Arsenal were really good that day Manchester City ended up winning the game Rodri scored a last minute winner 12-30 New Year's Day Man City, how on earth, Man City? When, when I talk about things like this, Ad, I don't like to make it Chelsea because I feel like people always go, of course he's going to say that he's a Chelsea fan. Of course he's going to moan about Chelsea fans going up to Molyneux on uh, on Christmas Eve because his mates will be doing it. It isn't that. I thought it was a disgrace when Man City fans had to get to London for 12.30 on New Year's Day. It's outrageous. And, and I think that, you know the glory that football fans felt off the back of the Super League? It feels like a long time ago now. Mm. I feel like something needs to be done here. And... I, I really Something do think... Something was done with the Super League, so changes can be made. They can be made, but it feels like a long time ago and it feels like it's moving completely in the wrong direction lately. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.